Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about our engine bay and how we reconfigured it to work better for the school bus build and how we got rid of the air intakes on the side of the bus because of our roof raise. Just kind of how that all worked out for us and how we did it. So the first thing I want to draw you guys attention to is our roof raise. So this sheet right here is all roof raise. We did 18 inches, but when we got to um, the engine bay area, I had to jump the roof raise up and over to avoid the framing. This is a solid frame on the engine bay. We added a window up here and this paneling and got rid of where the cold air intake was. So this is all fresh paneling with the bus on this side. On the driver's side, when we removed the cold air intake, we just routed it and pulled air from inside the bus. We, this is the air filter housing. It's the same one that came, comes with the bus. We just flipped it over, mounted it up on the seat, and um, yeah, we were able to use all the original piping, so there was nothing custom about that. It worked really well for us. I will say that, that because we're pulling from inside the bus, it's not the greatest practice and our filter gets slightly dustier faster that way. But we're still getting 25 pounds of boost and um, bus is running just fine. I do want to route this out and pull cold air from outside the bus, but that's a future project. Uh, we removed all of the air management panels that used to be on the floor of the bus, so we're pulling everything from underneath. We are slightly dustier probably than the average bus because of that, but um, this side's worse than it should be because we had a coolant leak that kind of coated everything in here with grime. Um, the only original part of the engine bay on the inside is this seat back. I repurposed that. I almost wish I pulled it out, but it works. So that's the only thing that we kept as far as the internal framing. So we coated all of the internal engine bay paneling with something called lizard skin. It's a ceramic coating that, um, there's two of them, I can't remember exactly, I'll put a link in the description. There's two products, one is a heat, um, like a heat resistive ceramic, and then one's a sound deadening ceramic coating. And they work excellent. Um, the bus inside stays nice and cool. My office probably gets 10 degrees warmer than ambient when we're driving on a hot day. But works really great. We can't hear the engine really. Um, we have to check the tachometer to make sure it's still running sometimes. Highly recommend that product. So over on this side of the bus, this is the passenger side. We added, this is our deep freeze. Um, we have the same ceramic coatings on here, and then two inches of insulation, and then the freezer itself. And it's been running really nice and cool yet. Um, if we do have issues, I have the fan wired up to my vent area. So right now it's just naturally drawing air from inside the bus, running it through the freezer and then exhausting it through here. Um, and it's it's been working great so far. I'll let you guys know if we have issues down the road. So on this side, you can see the ceiling of our engine bay are all custom panels. They can all be removed if I need to work on the engine. So that's underneath my desk. This front panel here at the top, that also can be removed. And the frame for it can also be unbolted if I need to do like an in-frame or something major on the engine. So because I'm going to be working on it, I wanted to have good access. We barely clear the intercooler and the air intake piping, but that's kind of how we had it designed. It gave us maximum room on the inside of the bus. These panels are two inches thick and they have two inches of insulation in them. And big steel frame, they're heavy. They weigh close to 100 pounds each. There's two panels. And that's kind of how we framed it out because I didn't want to waste any space inside the bus because this is all underneath my um, workbench in my office. Um, if we go up in here, this is underneath my floor in my office, so that's the hatch panel that I can pull off to check engine oil. We have a fire blanket we have on there, um, and 
that's probably where a majority of our heat comes through, to be honest, into our office. So, um, might adapt that later and do something different there. So on the floor here, also remove the air management panels. Then I just bolted my spare air brake chamber and um, airbag back here and just bolted them to the frame so I have them if I need them. And that's pretty much it. Did the same thing on this side. Removed the cold air intake and then put the new window and paneling up there. So we think it turned out pretty good. So here we are in my office. This is the finished engine bay area. I'm gonna start off with where the original seat back was. So this is the only part I kept. I kind of regret doing it. I could have had more room in the engine bay. I would have gone straight across with the framing. But eh, hindsight's 2020. This works pretty good. So this is our typical underfloor storage area. We have our Insulfast on the ground. So that's two inches of insulation. Screwed to that, we have our plywood, just half inch OSB, and then we have just some cheap carpet we found in the cutoff section at Menards. Uh, so that wraps up to where the seat used to sit, and that um, just has three quarter inch plywood and then our flooring. And then we paneled the seat back area. And then over here, this is the engine bay access. So it's just a, a floor hatch that I can pull up. The oil check is right here. So it would have been really hard to get to um, due to the freezer. So this is kind of how I had to do it. But I cleaned this up quite a bit. There used to be a whole bunch of air conditioning hoses that went through here. We pulled that out. So it's, it's as tidy as it's gonna get probably. Um, I have some, really need to pressure wash the engine yet. But. And over here, this is the only spot where we could not insulate because of the size of the freezer. So we have the lizard skin on this side and on the inside of the freezer. And it is remarkably cool. Um, most of the freezer is behind the frame rail, so that probably helps a lot. But it doesn't run an abnormal amount of time. I also have this vent that just pulls cold air or exhaust hot air, however you want to look at it, from the floor of my office area gets sucked in through here. There's an air gap at the front and the side here. And that gets pulled through. There's an exhaust fan down by where the actual compressor is for the freezer. But these are just floor hatches that you can lift up. They have these nice like boat hatch pull rings. So over here, this panel is probably gonna be the hardest one to remove if I need to work on the engine. The steel here on bolts, on both ends, that's just behind the wood paneling. So I'd have to unscrew um, all these trim head screws. But I could probably get it done in a half hour if I had to. So this just screwed on the same way. But So here we have the two floor hatches that lead right into the engine bay. These are just removable and they are very heavy because they are a uh, quarter inch wall framed tubing, two inch by two inch, and with half inch plywood on the top and then steel on the bottom. And they have two inches of insulation in between them. Um, they just they just sit in place. If they ever wiggle, I guess I'll put some screws in, but I uh, haven't had any problems yet. This portion here is fixed because that squares off the seat back so that it didn't have a sloped panel right here. And on the walls we have our um, Insofast just glued up. I ran out of time this year to finish the paneling in here. That's kind of low on my priority list because we have doors that cover it up. But um, panels are all glued to the wall and ready to be, I can nail in our sheeting whenever I get to it. So when these panels are off and this is off, you have pretty excellent access to the engine bay. The only thing that might be a problem is if you have to get the um, valve cover off. I might not have enough clearance there, but then you just have to remove this this piece of framing. So, 
So that is the finished engine bay on the inside. Next up, we're going to show you all the build footage and go over kind of how I constructed it and why I did what I did. So let's go to that next. Back here, we have my workshop area and well, office slash workshop. So I have this wall panel in, and then I have this plywood screwed down temporarily. But everything back here, except for this seat, because I really didn't want to tear it out and put something exactly like it back in. Everything else get, can be unbolted and pulled out so you can actually work on the whole engine from above, something that you couldn't have done before. So um, I'll have a insulated metal uh, cap to the engine bay basically, or ceiling for the engine bay. They'll be bolted on so you can unbolt it and pull it out. And then above that I'll have, uh, I think it's about a foot of storage space, and then I'll have my workbench on top of that. So I hope this answers you guys' questions about the engine bay and how we did it. Um, to summarize, it has much easier access, um, it stays nice and cool still, but it is a little dirtier, a little dustier. So that's kind of the trade-offs you get with this system. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.